Easy Breezy Cover Girl. <laughs> you were waiting to say that one, weren't you? Yeah, I don't know why that was in my head. That was strange. I do have to start, though, Oh, by saying, rest in peace, Betty White. No! Yeah, she passed away. I mean, as of recording this was uh, this afternoon. It's pretty I, sad. I like that meme I saw, like, not even like a month ago. I think it was on the Facebook or the book face. And it was like... Uh, Betty White is turning 100 and she can no longer play with Legos. And it was like for ages like six to 99. <laughs> Are you and serious? it just showed a picture of her frowning. Oh, man. Well, yeah, she was only a few weeks away from her 100th birthday. That is really sad. Yeah, that's kind of a, that's the shittiest way for 2021 to end right there. Damn you. Damn you, 2021. But on a lighter note, we finally surpassed 100 subscribers. We did it. That's crazy to me. On, on YouTube, right? You're referencing On, on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Right. Which is, uh, you know, it's my little baby. I love YouTube. Yeah. I want us to grow there specifically. Um, and that marks a new, it unlocks a special thing for our podcast going forward, which is the Spirit Box. Yeah. It's on its way. It's being delivered this afternoon. I was going to ask you, Britton, but uh, I'll ask you live. Do you think that your wife's going to be okay with you having that at your house? Uh, she helped me order it. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah, she's, just... yeah, my wife's okay with that stuff. Like, yeah. Fantastic. I don't, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't s- think there's really anything she wouldn't let me have. I was trying to leverage that so I could have it in the office. <laughs> yeah, no, it stayed in my house. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's an expensive piece of tech. I don't trust you with it. I've yeah. seen what you do to your tech. <laughs> so the way the spirit box works is it scans a bunch of radio frequencies very fast. You ask it questions, and the theory is it um, the ghosts are able to manipulate the sound waves to make uh, conversation. To yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what it's done or what we can do with it because uh, I've only ever heard of a spirit box. You're like, hey, we're gonna get one ordered for 100 subscribers, and I think we're right at 106 right now. 108. 108. We got two more. Wow, yeah. we're just climbing. And and to all of our subscribers on YouTube, honestly, thank you. We were chasing 100. We really wanted to do it by the end of the year, and we didn't think we would. Well, Cleet had a suggestion or a, a guess that we would, and we did. Yeah, that was my prediction. And uh, so what we're going to do the next couple episodes, we'll have it right at the front. We'll ask it a couple questions, but then it's going to be a segment at the very end if you wanted to stick around throughout the episode, and you'll hear us ask questions at the end. Right, which is another segue into what is another thing that we want to do uh, this upcoming year. So as we're continuing to grow, we want to, you know, keep growing and keep trying these new things. Um, So we are going to be starting a Patreon at some point. I'm thinking probably around our two-year anniversary, which is in February. That'd be probably a good time to start it. Um, And what we're going to be doing is if you do donate to the Patreon, you'll get your chance to have us ask a question of your choosing on the show. Yeah. Ask the great beyond. And we will ask the question, and you can hear it live as to the answers that you've always wanted to know. I need that thing, that that clip from Bill O'Reilly, when he goes, fuck it, we're doing it live, because we could put that in so <laughs> many parts of our like podcast. Right? Uh, that video is among the best on the internet. <laughs> it really is. We're doing it live, fuck it! All right, so what is our topic tonight? So yeah, we're doing ocean noises from uh, a listener named Ian, who has been a supporter of the show and had some really nice things to say about it. So uh, we're going to be covering some ocean noises or, or ocean sounds. Yeah, what he said is he was a college student. He liked to listen to our podcast while just driving to school. Yeah, well, this one's for you, bud. Um, I do have one story that I wanted to share. It was kind of interesting that happened to me and my family this last weekend. Uh, so for the holidays, my family had come in from from out of state, and there were you know we have quite a few of us so we just hang out and ate food and drink some drinks we decided we wanted to go see the new spider-man movie and so uh we're getting the you know the rounds and getting the head count for the tickets and as we're getting ready to order them we realize we have 13 people and my wife just nonchalantly tells me my uncle "Ooh, you probably need to cancel we're like what do you mean she said well etiquette states that if you have a party of 13 you need to cancel or find someone new to go with, like to make it 14 or have someone stay back to make it 12. And she said it so nonchalantly. We're sitting there like, oh, okay, whatever. And uh, so the whole time we're like, okay, whatever. So she stays back with my, ch- with my kids. And so all 13 of us are getting ready to go. First thing that happens is my mom gets stuck in some crazy traffic on her way home. So we're like running late to get out of the door. And as we're leaving, we get that weather storm alert on our phones for the snow squall remember the snow squall yeah yeah. it happened 
I had never known what a snow squall was, but it's like an apparent, like instant whiteout from snow that just comes out of nowhere. So this starts happening on our phones as we're getting into the cars because there's three cars, you know, 13 of us. And as we're driving to the place, we get that weather warning again, halfway there. And then it's just a white knuckle drive because we can't see the roads. It's just snowing. And the theater's 45 minutes away from where we're at because we wanted to go to this specific theater in IMAX. So we get to the theater, 15 minutes late. We're rushing in. And as soon as my, my aunt scans the tickets on her phone, the power goes out in the theater. The whole theater runs out of power. What? Yeah. So we're in the gate, getting ready to go to our theater. Everything shuts down. So we're waiting, like, okay, maybe it'll come back up. Maybe we're good. We'll still get to see Spider-Man. We're all excited for this. Power never came back up. So after like 15 minutes, we leave. They give us all our reimbursement tickets. We can use it any time. So we have to take another white knuckle drive all the way home. <laughs> so when we got back to the house, we're all like, oh, that was kind of annoying. You know, two and a half hours in the car with snow. We didn't get to see the movie. And I'm like looking at my uncle. I'm like, wait a second. My wife literally nonchalantly warned us something like this would happen. So... It's a real fucking thing. Yeah, man. If you have a party of 13, 13, don't do anything. Yeah, I heard the Donner party had 13 members. I'm kidding. <laughs> Joking. Speaking of which, of movies, did you watch the new Matrix? No, did you? Dude, yes. I heard it's awful. The reviews have been terrible. Dude, it was so... I mean, it was okay, but the end was just like so cheesy. It seemed like it was like a $200 budget film. Really? Yeah. It just reminds me that it's almost equivalent to the scene... Justice League. Oh, Justice League, yeah. Where, where freaking Superman shows up and Batman, like, fucking pees his pants with a smile. <laughs> like, Ooh. That made you so mad. No, it's just like, it's just the worst scene in the world. But that's what it reminded me of. Because it looked like cheap CGI. But not just the end. Was the rest of the movie okay? Or was it just a total flop the whole way through? I think it was okay. I didn't hate it. Oh, okay. I just... I, I thought the ending was really stupid. Well, in your standards of not hating it, then it must be pretty okay. Endings are important because it, it, it leaves the final taste in your mouth. And it was like they just punched you in the face right at the end. Right. It's like, No, I man. agree. Speaking of endings, obviously, because have you watched any of the new Dexter series that came on? Dude, you know me. Oh, you, you need to. You to need to. I ain't fucking watching that. Why? Because you're pissed of how it ended, right? No, I got bored of the same plot every season. Yeah. Right, but this is completely different. It is absolutely different, and it's so good. You would really enjoy it. I promise you would. And there's two episodes left. I have my theories as to what's going to happen. I'm really excited for this to go through, but I don't want it to be over, over. All right. So now we're going to start our segment of Tales from the Deep. Okay, so again, jumping back to ocean sounds, uh, I mean, when you think of the ocean, did you realize there's 80% roughly that we have unexplored? Dude, the ocean's big. Yeah, it's massive. Like 80% as of 2021, roughly unexplored in the ocean. So there's really so many different factors that can contribute to such a huge area being unexplored. I mean, humans simply cannot get deep enough to discover (laughs) what... Is down there. Oh, Britain, I can get deep enough. Oh, can you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're getting too deep there, sir. So there's a handful of noises, or there's more than a handful of noises that have been recorded throughout history. Uh, you know, you've got submarines that will record it. You've got some other arrays that will record ships, and even some people just out floating in the ocean can hear these noises. Um, but I wanted to talk just about a couple, you know, couple of them, and I know you've got some other stories revolving around stuff in the ocean. And I think I've mentioned it before, but I do have, I believe, thalassophobia, which is like a fear of deep water. I don't like it. The thought of like swimming in the middle of the ocean just terrifies the shit out of me. Well, you become part of the food chain. Oh, yeah. The very bottom part of the food chain. So, uh, yeah, this one was kind of scary to to research for me. And some of these noises are pretty creepy. We actually have a lot of audio on this one. You guys get to hear all the noises. So we're really excited about this one. So the first noise that we're going to be covering is known as the 52 Hertz whale, which got the name of the loneliest whale in the world. Isn't that just sad? Why is it sad? Why is it lonely? I don't know. Maybe it's just has that personality that's just so off-putting that nobody wants to be around it. Truth. Kind of like yourself. (laughs) (laughs) So even though the name itself suggests that it's coming from a whale, it actually hasn't been proven as information is pretty damn scarce. So we don't know if the noise even belongs to a whale. 
could be some other creature swimming through the deepest depths of the ocean. We don't know. But they just called it the loneliest whale in the world. Okay, let's listen to it now. Going, Ooh, Ooh, so sad. Nobody loves me. I'm just a lonely whale. Um, but this noise throughout the years, scientists and even filmmakers have scoured the ocean looking for the creature for a documentary titled Finding 52 The Search for the Loneliest Whale in the World. Just a big whale in a small ocean. So, do you think it's a whale? I have no idea. <laughs> you don't have any theories on what it could be? You're not an oceanographer? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not a whale biologist, because if I was, I'd be a jerk, like that whale biologist in Futurama. That's true. So yeah, so that's the uh, 52 hertz whale noise. All right. The next one is referred to as the bio duck. I love this name. It's like an, a modified ocean duck, if you will. This mysterious and ominous noise sounds like a duck's quack and was detected by submarines in 1960 while out in the middle of the ocean. This noise has also been reported along the coast of Australia, Australia, particularly in the Perth Canyon. So let's give this one a listen, shall we? Isn't that crazy? Bioduck. It escaped a government facility. So after decades of research and studies on this rumored ocean duck, it was concluded that the noise was coming from the Antarctic mink whales, or minky whales. However you want to pronounce it. Those whales just sound like ducks. All right. Sounds cool. Okay. So this one has a fun name titled the Boing. Boing. Ocean Boing. This sound was first heard in the 1950s by U.S. Navy submarines off San Diego, California, and Kaneohe, Hawaii. In 1962, a man by the name of G.M. Wenz also described hearing a mysterious Boing sound. For 50 years, this sound remained a complete mystery and received massive public attention. So let's go ahead and give this one a listen and tell me what you think about it. So that's crazy one, isn't it? That's creepy. <laughs> what did you that do here so in the middle of the ocean? Creepy. You just heard that. I would swim faster. It's coming for us. Yeah. No, that one was, it's really intense. And it, it does sound like a boing, especially the like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, Just, dude. I, I would think my life is coming to a close. Yeah, that's not something you want to hear in the middle of anywhere. This is a final season. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> the earth is ending. So it wasn't until 2002 when the Southwest Fisheries Science Center followed the noise and identified it belonging to, yet again, those damn mink whales offshore the Hawaiian Islands. So they have, like, so many different noises, those damn mink whales. There was this one time I was camping out by the Green River. Oh, no. And uh, we were hearing, like, this really strange noise, and we thought it was, like, maybe cattle or something. And it, I think uh, the locals told us it was bullfrogs. But all night we were hearing this really loud, weird noise, and we couldn't see where it was coming from. You confused bullfrogs with cattle? That's insane. You should have heard it. The noise was strange. I mean, if you're thinking it's cattle, and, oh, no, it's just bullfrogs. That's a strange sound. There was no bullfrog. cows there, man. Like, we were, like, in the middle of a canyon. I'm like, we can see everything. What is making this noise? All right, guys. Well, we're going to go over to my section, and it's tales from the ocean, whether it be creepy, funny, or just darn right weird. So the first one is Slappy the Sub. Slappy the Sub? <laughs> it's like Slacky, Slappy the Frog? Yeah, maybe. Okay, well, let's hear about Slappy. So, sailing off the coast of Florida in a submarine at periscope depth, we see a small fishing boat go by. So the person riding this is in a submarine. Mm -hmm. The fishing boat slows down, and on the emergency frequency channel, we hear in a very southern twang, is that a submarine? <laughs> that must be a dang submarine. The man immediately strips completely naked and then displays his rear end for all of us to see on the periscope. Oh, my God. He slaps his ass a few times and then carries on with his day. That's it? Yeah. Could you imagine you, you're just sitting there in a boat, and you see a periscope come out of the water? Like, what would you do? 
you probably weigh, but this guy <laughs> took down his pants, you know, started spanking his ass in, you know, like that's hilarious. Okay. That's a dang submarine. That's, that's a story to take home to your family. You show, will not believe what I saw. Show them what God gave you, Earl. <laughs> you got it, Marjorie. <laughs> Couple of smacks of the butt and you're good. All right. The next one is called the Spooky Wave. Oh, man. We were sailing with my friend in his small yacht boat about 10 meters long. Not showing off. Night fishing, he called it. Apparently, some sorts of fish can be caught with higher probability at night. It's true. Yeah. So, obviously, we just let the fishing equipment do its job, and we're drinking heavily. Just drop the lines in, crack a couple beers, and just sit back. I just imagine they put in the lines in the water and then just open up some Jaeger and go, let's go. Let's go. Whoever yeah, gets drunk yeah. the fastest wins. But like, by 3 a.m., we were piss drunk. So they've only been there for, I don't know how many hours. Not a lot. They're piss drunk. Day drinking is hard because you're so tired. Yeah, right? And his friend is ends up sleeping on the deck. So back to the story. I needed to take a piss. So I got closer to one of the sides of the boat and take a glorious piss <laughs> in the beautiful <laughs> sea. Just calm weather, small waves making this calm water splashy sound when touching the sides of the boat. Suddenly, I see a huge wave coming towards us. Oh, shit. I stare at it for a couple of seconds because I'm drunk and thinking that this might be my drunk eyes playing tricks on me. He's seeing like six waves. It's I'm like, like I'm like relating to this guy because I, I would not believe it at first. Yeah. No. You, you see this big ass wave coming towards you and you're drunk. You're like, uh, am I just hallucinating this or something? This is what I'm talking about. That's why the ocean is terrifying. Yeah. Nothing good is in the ocean. So... He's like, am I drunk? And then, nope. Huge wave, maybe around fucking 50 to 20 meters tall. Mm. So this is double the size of the length of their boat. So he's saying our boat is tiny compared to it. It was very wide. There was no chance I could navigate the boat to avoid it. I realize nothing can be done and brace myself and scream at my friend to wake the fuck up and hold on to something. Not my penis. <laughs> hold on to my deck. <laughs> We're going down. My penis is buoyant. Although that wouldn't have helped, the wave was so much taller than our boat. My friend shows no sign of waking up, so I shake him violently because he is the one who can drive the boat. Nope. He just lies there like a brick. All this happened in about 10 to 15 seconds, although they felt like hours to me. The huge wave is approaching rapidly. It's probably about 10 boat lengths from us. So I brace myself and push my friend down the stairs into the luggage (laughs) equipment compartments of the boat so that he doesn't get thrown out of the boat at the impact. Probably five seconds left to the impact. I'm panicking and holding onto the rail with so much strength. If it was someone's arm, I would have crushed it. And nothing. About 30 meters away from us, the wave just sort of collapses. It looks just like it went back to the sea. Flat sea. Nothing. What? And me shitting my pants violently. So I'm, I'm chalking it up to a drunk illusion. I am still not sure what happened. And my friend didn't believe me when I told him in the morning. He slept like a baby, and I was sitting there all night with my eyes wide open, swearing not to piss into the sea anymore <laughs> because I felt like Poseidon being pissed at me was being pissed at me. Yeah. He didn't write it right, but... Well, would you rather be pissed off or pissed on? Poseidon would rather be pissed off. Yeah, apparently he pissed into the sea, and the sea wanted to piss back. Yeah, it was just really upset. So I, lo- I love the friend's perception of this whole thing. He just passes out drunk on the deck, just sleeping away, having his drunken dreams, gets thrown down the steps by his friend. He has, like, bruises the next morning. Like, what the fuck happened? You <laughs> won't like, believe just, this. He just threw me down the stairs. There was a huge wave coming. It's like, yeah, sure. So he's drunk. Passed out, thrown down the steps, and that that's what he remembers. Yeah, that's okay. crazy. That's insane. All right, back to these ocean noises. So this noise is referred to as Julia. On March 1st, 1999, a strange whining noise was heard between Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. It was recorded by the Eastern Equatorial Pacific Autonomous Array. Let's play the noise and see what you think it might be. (laughs) 
Yeah, that sounds like my ex-girlfriend, Julia. <laughs> Is that what she sounded like? Yeah. No, that one undoubtedly to me, I think it's a whale right off the top. Like, it just sounds like a whale noise. Yeah, yeah. I could buy that. Speculation on this noise is that it's an iceberg grinding on the ocean floor. Nice. Yeah. Science always has, like, the like they just get rid of the fun shit. Like, no, it's not a creature. It's just an iceberg on the bottom of the floor. Like, what if it's a creature calling out for love? Might have been. Might have been Julia. She's really wanting some help. But uh, apparently it's just an iceberg grinding across the bottom of the floor. Oh, good old Julia. Fun, fun. This noise shares some similar origins as the last one, with some thinking an iceberg is being ground along the bottom of the ocean. But this one is called the slowdown noise, as it sounds as if an iceberg is grinding to a halt. Let's listen. That sounded like a plane coming right? <laughs> from the sky for a minute. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. I like that noise. So at first, though, I mean, it does sound like as if you're hearing someone crying out from a distance. At least that's what I heard. It's like someone, and then it just gets like deeper and deeper. Maybe even someone wailing. It was recorded on May 19th, 1997 by the Eastern Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array in the, Atlant- in the Antarctic Peninsula. Wow. So there you go. That's the slowdown. All right, so before I tell you the uh, the name of this one, go ahead and hit up the next song or the next sound and tell me what you think it sounds like. You know, it sounds like a wolf underwater howling at the moon. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't get a wolf. Actually, I got a train. Oh, which wow. is what this one's called. Whoa! So yeah, I think it sounds like a train horn, but I can see wolves though too. But it's like it comes and goes. Uh, so this mysterious noise was recorded in Antarctica's Ross Sea on March fourth, nineteen ninety seven, by the Eastern Equatorial Pacific Autonomous Hydrophone Array. And that thing records a lot of things. This noise is also still unexplained. But researchers are suggesting, like the last two, an iceberg is most likely dragging its ass across the ocean floor. (laughs) I like to think it's like an oceanic railway. Yeah. Railway, not just some fucking iceberg. I think it's icebergs or whales. Iceberg ass grind. Yeah. Just itchy ass. Just grinding it on the bottom like dogs do. This one is called Mer Woman. Not so much seen, but definitely heard. I'm in the Navy, and about 12 years ago, I was standing watch in a submarine engine room. We were underway, can't for the life of me remember where to, from, or just making circles. It was the mid-watch, and I sat down to catch up on some logs. That's when I heard a woman's voice and felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand straight up. No woman was on the subs then. I got up looked around and found the other watches shooting the shit or doing their daily tasks. I thought, maybe I dozed off and dreamt it. I sat back down and heard it again, and it sounded like it was coming from outside the hatch I was just sitting under. I said, fuck this shit, out loud, and went to... As you do. And went to just be around the other guys on watch. It still gives me chills thinking about it now. I wish we had the audio for that one. Yeah. Was what it? Is, uh, what does a merwoman sound like? I don't know. Probably an iceberg grinding across the ocean floor or That's, a damn minky whale. It was whale. an iceberg dragon grinding the submarine. Yeah. It's a minky whale making love to an iceberg. It's crafty icebergs in there. Grinding. Yeah. The next one is called Worms. While I was in the Navy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> worms. <laughs> <laughs> While I was in the Navy, I was an engineer who worked in one of our ship's two engine rooms. I was tasked with cleaning out the tubes inside the heat exchanger that took in seawater to condense steam. 
The entire tube system and the end cap was filled to the brim with mud and some sort of sea worms. It looked like it was one giant living brown mass, Ugh. and it immediately threw up upon smelling and seeing it. We were in the Persian Gulf, and the water was relatively shallow and warm, so lots of creepy crawlies in our seawater pumps and heat exchangers. I would not want to clean that shit out. Oh, okay, that's it. So oh, that's, ba- that's it? Basically, you got to clean it up. It was a giant worm thing made of <laughs> littler worms. Yeah, Just a mass of worms that made one big worm. It was the thing. It was worms all the way down. The next story is, my friend is not a murderer. Oh, that's convincing. A friend of mine, known as Damo, was an avid fisherman, and he and his dad used to go out to sea fishing whenever they could. A few, a few years ago, he told me this story, and it creeped the hell out of me, so it seems like an appropriate place to tell it. Damo and his dad were on the second night of a trip deep sea fishing, and they decided to get some sleep in the early evening so they could go for whatever fish they, that were after at... So they, could, so they could go for whatever fish there were at around 1 a.m. This is really badly written. <laughs> I was going to say, that one doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, they only had a smallish boat, but the weather was extremely pleasant and the sea was calm to the point of stillness. So they figured it would be a great night fishing for them. Around 12.30 a.m., they started to get their gear up As they were on the starboard side getting the bait ready, they heard a loud splash on the port side. Uh As there was almost no swell, they figured it was either a large fish or some gear had somehow fallen in, so they went over to have a look. Floating face up in the water, only a few feet from the side of the boat, was a young woman. They reckoned she couldn't have been more than 30 at the most. She showed absolutely no sign of decomposition, bloating, And there was nothing tangled in her hair. All of this stuff would suggest that she was in the water for some time. So what what he's saying is it looks like she just recently went into the water. She was wearing a simple white skirt and a blue-colored strappy top, both of which were clean and apparently looked barely wet. Again, all indicating that she only just gone in the water. She showed no signs of damage, like having been beaten or attacked, and her eyes and mouth were shut. Damo said she looked totally peaceful and like she was simply asleep and just floating on her back in the water. They were both totally freaked out by the whole thing, but reaching more to the need to make sure she was okay instead of just standing there trying to work out where she came from. They tried to wake her up, shouting to her, etc., and they threw a line to her hoping they may catch her enough to pull her back in. She showed no signs of movement, and the splashing around they were making with the rope served only to let the body drift further away from the boat. When she was a few meters away, Damo ran off to grab a fishing rod, hoping they could pull her in that way, and his dad ran to the cabin to try to call the Coast Guard for help. When Damo got back to the side, she had vanished. He frantically searched around and splashed into the water with the the rod, thinking she had bobbed under the water or even drifted under the boat somehow, but the body had vanished. Eventually, his dad, figuring they couldn't just leave a potential dead-slash-unconscious body floating in the water, jumped in and swam over to where he had last seen her, hoping he may find her under the surface, but they couldn't find anything. They eventually drive the boat around in a good half-kilometer circle, but they never saw the body again. The Coast Guard did come out, and obviously Damo and his dad were kind of interrogated to make sure they hadn't murdered-slash-dumped the body but nothing came of it at all. The freakiest thing about it all was that the boat was thoroughly checked before they had set out fishing the day before, so they could say with certainty that there had been no woman on board when they set off, either a dead body or a stowaway slash homeless woman. The apparently fresh state of the body kind of removed the possibility that she had been in the water a while, and they, they just found the body, and they were far enough out from land and nowhere near any of the boats that her appearance is there just totally is unexplainable, as was the way the body just disappeared. Damo and his dad hadn't been gone for more than 20 seconds from the side of the boat, but in that time, the body just vanished. They were really both shaken by the whole thing, 
and were most terrified by the fact that her appearance was preceded by a heavy splash in the water, to them suggesting the body had only just entered the water from their own boat. They tell the story as a kind of, you won't believe what happened to us once type of thing, but it shook them so badly and neither has been back to the same fishing spot since. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, maybe she was sleeping. Yeah, as you do. She just pops up to the surface every now and again to sleep on the surface and then swims back down to the bottom. Maybe she was a mermaid. Yeah, maybe it was Julia. It was probably Julia. It's the one responsible for the noise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up the last three ocean sounds. Next one is referred to as the whistle. The whistle, the whistle heard across the ocean. The old whistle. So honestly, to me, I didn't get a whistle out of this one. Uh, it's, it sounds kind of more like a whirring noise, which we'll listen to. Uh, but the Eastern Pacific Autonomous Hydrophone gets the credit for capturing this one on July 7th, 1997. The point of origin is still unknown, but the researchers believe the sound to be similar to the eruption of submarine arc volcanoes. Let's play the audio. get a whistle out of that no <laughs> yeah it doesn't sound like a whistle it was the whir. it was the ocean whistling right okay so this next one in my opinion is the creepiest noise out of all of them this sound called the upsweep was first recorded in 1991 and sounds like a siren or howling of some sort let's tune in Isn't that creepy? Sounded like alarm bells almost. Yeah, like the tornado alarm bells that go off. The woo yeah. Woo yeah. The underwater facility was breached. Apparently, by yeah. the mermen. <clears throat> but that's the upsweeps. If I was ever in the ocean, I heard that noise. Just like you said, I'd think my life is over. Like, that's it. You don't come back from that. It starts flashing red. Yeah. The sirens are coming for me. I just poop myself in the ocean, and then that's, that's how I would die. Yeah, if I was ever going to get eaten by a shark, that's what I'd do. Yeah, take that. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was the noise you were going to hear every time a shark was coming after you? It would be terrifying. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this noise, based on studies performed, is that it seems to be seasonal. It seems to reach its peak in spring and fall and occurs near inferred volcanic seismicity. This is another that is still unknown in origin, but speculation leads researchers to believe it is the result of lava reacting with cold seawater. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Just speculation, though. It could be anything. That's just what the smart people think it is. But, you know, all of us who think there might be something else. I think it sounds like when a creature. tornado meets a volcano. It's an underground tornado. It's an underwater tornado <laughs> meeting a volcano. Yeah. And a typhoon. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a bunch of storms meeting in the middle of the ocean. I think that's what it is. So I did want to end with arguably the most notorious of ocean sounds. The bloop. It had background <laughs> music, man. Yeah, the audio we got had some background noise, but I think everyone heard the bloop, bloop. You've heard of the bloop before, right? Yeah. What's your speculation on it? It's uh, glaciers. It's what yeah. the scientists say. That's what the scientists say. Yeah. So the bloop was recorded in 1997 by two hydrophones roughly 4,800 kilometers apart. So two different places recorded the same noise. The point of origin is suggested to be off the South American coast. The sound resembles gas or oxygen bubbles rising through the water. The idea of this sound coming from a creature was suggested. However, the bloop was many times louder than any known creature previously recorded. Some did speculate that this came from a massive undiscovered sea monster. Cthulhu. Like Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Right. As scientists do, they debunked all the fun shit, stating it's not likely a massive sea beast, but rather suggesting the noise belonging to an ice quake generated by large icebergs fracturing and cracking. What would you do if you saw Cthulhu in the ocean? I mean, I think it would be pretty cool. 
But that's probably the last thing you'd ever see, if mm-hmm. you're being honest. You know what I'd do? What's that? In a southern twang, I'd be like, my God, that's Cthulhu. And then I'd pull down <laughs> my pants, show up my bare ass, and it starts Smack smacking it. it. I can totally see you doing it. While making though. direct eye contact the yeah. whole time. So you're like turning around, smacking your bare ass at Cthulhu. Yeah. I can see you doing that. I just, I just hope we're not in the same vicinity. In the most southern twang. Yeah. Uh, I would just be like, HP Lovecraft was right. It exists. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the ocean noises. I mean, it's not all of them. It's the ones we wanted to cover. So, again, Ian, thank you for your suggestion. But I think, Cleet, you have one more story? I have two more two stories. Two more stories. Yeah. All right. So this one's called The Real Merman. Oh. Yeah. On a 41-foot sailboat in Chesapeake Bay with about seven other men doing a shakedown slash test cruise planned to be out for about 12 hours. Mid-1980s, not as reliable weather prediction resources. We get caught in a tropical storm, winds gusting into the 50-mile-per-hour range, just short of a weak hurricane. We had just barely rigged storm hazards hazards and storm sails because the one fellow on board who was the best sailor sensed the storm was almost on us. Otherwise, if we didn't do this, we would have died. During the storm itself, I expected to die at any time. In fact, we made a Security, security call <laughs> security on, the, call. <laughs> on the radio. If you if you have time at sea, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's not that important. Hello, okay. security. Security. I'm in die need of help, security. <laughs> For what seemed like 15 minutes, we were in a maelstorm. No visibility, but then it passed. We would live. This was about 3 p.m. And although there was cloud cover, of course, the ambient light was such that you could see two miles or so in any direction. If you're familiar with the sea, you know that such storms, particularly in shallow depths near land masses, dredge a lot of things off the seafloor. Oh, shit, this is just one story. So I only have one left. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah, apparently this is my last story. Sorry. So the siding. We're all on deck, working lines, checking damage, etc., and the bay around us is choppy and churning and foaming. Old-timey sailors often use the saying, the sea is confused. <laughs> I, the sea is foaming at the mouth. I looked about 15 feet of the starboard side, and something swims to the surface, breaks the surface, looks at us, then submerges again. It's it w- Julia again. <laughs> Probably. It was like a thin man with humanoid shape. Arms articulated like a man, a human head, but its skin was covered in scales like a snake. Mm. It looked at us, blinked its weird, heavy-lidded eyes, and then dove back under. So, maybe you need to know a few things about me at the moment, at that moment. I was wondering. I'm like, I need to know more about this guy at the moment. No drugs, no alcohol, no injuries. Mm. I was elated because I was glad to be alive, but my senses in the situations were sharpened, not dulled. I had at that time about six years' experience on ships and fishing boats and had seen squid, octopi, flying fish, sharks, skates, all around the world. I was not the type of guy to see a patch of seaweed and call it a sea monster. Sure. That's a sea man. He sees a local swimmer. It's a merman. It's some (laughs) seamen. (laughs) <laughs> that, is, that, that should have been the title that over there looks like a seaman this one's a, this one's called a seaman <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of seamen out at sea i made an instant decision that i was not going to say anything what could i say i just saw a strange creature take my word for it mum's the word the men on the boat were all mechanics and engineers and professionals w- why get a reputation as a flake at the time, it was important for each of us to get D, skipper, or OOD qualification, and saying something like that would be frowned upon. And as I stood there in my life vest, soaking wet, hooked onto the steel lifeline, glad to be alive, one of the other sailors, a USN captain, JS is his initials, with over 30 years' experience in the surface Navy, piped up and said, I just saw a brown thing pop up on the surface. It looked like a lizard man with a scaly face. 
It blinked at us with these big eyes and then went back under. Well, it was gaining some credibility. Yeah, I saw that too, I said. No one else said that they had seen it. Then we sailed back to the pier later that day and didn't speak of it again. It's just all nonchalant. Yeah, I saw that too, sir. And I was like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's go home. No one speaks of this again? Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is going to be wrapping up our deep dive into the sea. The abyss that is our ocean. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, as of recording this, it's New Year's Eve. But as it's posted, it's a brand new year. Can't believe it's 2022 already. So I will say one last thing here before we let you guys go. Be ready for our Spirit Box special next episode. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. And for all of you who are already subscribed, thank you again for making that milestone complete. We were really hoping to hit 100 by the end of the year, and you guys surpassed it. Uh, if you if you like us, you know, again, throw it out to somebody else. You know, we we really appreciate all the support you've given us. We've got a lot of exciting things coming that we really want to do. Uh, be on the lookout later for Patreon and our Spirit Box stuff, and we're really excited about all of it. And as always, thank you for entering the abyss. Until next time.